What's up everyone? Welcome to Juniority TV. I'm your host Mona and today I have a phenomenal guest for you guys. His name is Jaquiel Jackson and without further ado, let's go ahead and meet Jaquiel. Hi Jaquiel. Hi. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm uh, doing I'm, fantastic. I'm good. It's so good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Of course, it's such a pleasure. Um, so real quick, obviously, I think um, I am uh, actually interviewing you and operating the show today. So uh, if you see me clicking around, that's what I'm doing. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you've been up to during uh, quarantine. Um, I've just been doing a lot of classes, um, watching, watching TV, yeah. um, working out a lot, and trying to get back in shape because um, we started playing basketball again. So, um, yeah, I've just been trying to do that, and I've been doing lots of interviews like this one um, almost like every week and stuff, trying yeah. to run the business still and trying to adapt to things um, during quarantine. So, yeah, I've just pretty much been a little bit bored, but uh, I'm actually not bored because I feel like I'm more busy, busy during quarantine than I am, like, without quarantine because of all these interviews and stuff. It's like um, it fits more time for interviews and things like that. So it's yeah. probably, like, way more busy. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's definitely um... – you know, a lot more flexibility in terms of also time, you know, you'd have to drive somewhere else and do this interview. And now it's like, you can do it from home. And uh, it's it's great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, what how have you adjusted in terms of your business? Um, I've do, I've been doing um packing parties in my house, like set up setting up a little table in the living room and then um, going around in an assembly, um, assembly line like we usually do. Yeah. Um, the thing that's way harder that we haven't adapted to pretty much is not having enough people. That's right. something that's really um, hard. It, when we do blessing bags um, now, like at the house, it takes like a whole day. Yeah. Um, and I need my free time. So sometimes I get frustrated, but it takes like the whole day because we don't have those volunteers. We don't have family members and friends coming over to help. So um, that's been a struggle, but we've managed to keep going with the organization and not stop just because of quarantine on um, the corona. So, and we're still giving back to like shelters and um, people on the streets, so. That's really cool. And I love how you've uh, really honestly ramped up your game, uh, which is fantastic. So tell me a little bit about, I know you got into blessing bags. Tell me a little bit about uh, Project I Am. So Project I Am is an organization that builds awareness to homelessness and provides blessing bags, like um, they're full of soap, tissue, socks, things that can help the homeless on a daily basis. Now, I've been doing this organization since I was eight and now I'm 12, so for the past four years, um, I've impacted over like 40, I think it's, o yeah, it's over 40,000 men, women, and children across the world. Um, so yeah, that's what my organization does pretty much. That's really cool, and it's it's really amazing to see how many uh, lives you've been able to touch by this. So walk me through going back uh, when you were eight years old and, um, you know, the whole story of how you ended up incorporating Project Tiam and also what uh, was going through your mind when you decided, you know, to come up with the blessing bags and why did you come up with the blessing bags? So it was, it all started when I was five years old. I went to go feed the homeless with my aunt and my cousins. Um, this is my first real big experience with the homeless. So I kind of like saw how they lived, how they slept, how they ate. And I didn't really understand at five years old that everybody had homes. So I went home and asked my parents if we could give them all houses. We obviously couldn't do that. So they had a conversation with me. They sat me down and we thought different things that we have on a daily basis that they don't have and we thought of blessing bags. That's really cool. And I love how how involved your family uh, is in this. And I know you mentioned that you've um, given out about 40,000 blessing bags. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing it since um, I was eight years old. Now I'm 12. Oh, um, going to turn 13 
in September, so soon to be. But um, I've been doing this for four years now. Um, so, yeah, I've passed out at least, like, over um, 40,000 throughout the years. That's really cool. Well, um, we got to look out for your birthday and give you a shout out for sure. Um, so, you. of course, um, when you first started, obviously, you know, your, your family and your community were there to cheer you on, which is really awesome to have their support. But I'm curious, was there any like pivotal point in your project, like an event that happened that um, was a catalyst for more people to find out about you? Wait, can you repeat the question? So was there was there like a pivotal point in your in your uh, you know project where something happened and it totally changed the game for you? More people started finding out about you. What was that? Oh, the turning okay. point. Yeah, the turning point was really media. Um, I was just doing like these little patent parties, doing like fifty bags and things like that, and somehow I ended up in an article. Then more news station. Then like after I ended up in the news article, um, um, WGN they picked it up and they wanted to hear about my story. So from then it just blew up. Like more and more news stations started to um, contact me asking for like interviews. And that really spread the word about um, what I was doing a lot. And then it went from, from like just in Chicago to all over the United States to, to now all over the world, yeah. which is amazing to even say, yeah. um, like worldwide, that's amazing. Um, I've been interviewed by people, um, by, by people like all over the world, not just in the United States. So it, I'm really like proud to say that, yeah. Um, as you should that's see. really how it happened yeah that's really cool um definitely the media helps and you know bringing attention to stories like this um where young people are helping out is really really important so yeah it's not the media is not always the media won't the media is not all bad all the time so yep. i mean sometimes it can be a big help yeah yeah sometimes it can be overwhelming and you know you just have to um be selective of what you watch, right? Um, if you yeah. can always find positive po positivity out there. So um, yeah, the media is really, really important catalyst for positivity for sure. Um, so former Barack Obama, former President Barack Obama recognized you as one of the three most influential people in 2017. You have clearly continued to be influential in your community. What did it mean to you when Obama tweeted you back in 2017? I don't even know because, and that's that's not like a bad answer because it's so unbelievable that like, like it's that crazy that I don't even know how like that feels basically because um, I never thought I would be in a position to like meet a person um, like him. So, I mean, it was just great to hear that um, he, like, knows my name. He tweeted about me. That was just, like, awesome. Just It was kind of like a funny story. My mom woke me up at, like, 6 o'clock in the morning, yelling and screaming and jumping, saying, Obama's tweeting about you. And and I was like, what? And because I was, like, super tired. I'm not a morning person at all. Yeah. Um. So, like, I said, Am I going to have lunch with him or like let me sleep because I don't have to wake up until seven for school. So um, yeah. it was kind of like I was just doing peace. So later in the day, more and more people started telling me about him, like tweeting about me because I'm more of a day person. So um, that's when people start like I started getting more excited about it and realizing how big it was. Um, yeah, that that's how it happened. Basically, it was really fun. It was really funny. And what's, what's even cooler is, I think, was it right away or a few years later, he requested to meet you, right? Yeah, it was like two months later, he requested to meet me. Um, it was like one of the best days of my life, um, getting to meet the first black president. Um, he is like a really big inspiration for me. So that was just really cool. Um, here's another funny story that it was actually a surprise. So the, we, we were like in touch with the Obama Foundation 
um, but like after he tweeted about me, we got in contact with him, started talking about like more my organization, and they, we like, like kept in touch with each other. So they basically asked us to come out um, to a reception. Mm-hmm. Um, it was kind of like for people who were doing great things in the city of Chicago um, for the community. So I was the only kid in the room. Um, it was me, my mom, and my um, and everybody else with like adults and stuff. So we get there. There's no chairs. There's these tall black tables. There's no food, no drinks. So we're just standing there talking to each other for like an hour. Um, and I am a kid, so I think I have a short. Um, what is it called? Short. In- I forgot how to say. It. No. Yeah, intentions, man. That's <laughs> that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Um, um, I have a short attention span, so I was just, like, getting so tired of just, like, networking. I started, like, bugging my mom and saying, can we get food and things like that. So all the standing around was worth it because a guy came out of the curtain and said that we're now going to be Obama. So I got, like, it was, like, crazy. I started jumping up and down, and, and my mom said, keep it down. Like, you need to calm down. And everybody else is like just like the crowd just went um completely um really loud because everybody just started murmuring like um but i was the only one pretty much screaming and jumping up and down and started shaking my mom and i told her i was going to be first in line which i was so as i walk up to him there's a lady next to him who tells him who this person is so he doesn't forget in the moment Mm -hmm. um and he actually interrupted her um and said i know who this young man is i was tweeting about him so to know that he like remembers my name is like such cool. an honor. Yeah. Yeah. That's really awesome. What a great story. And thank you for sharing that with us. Um, speaking of the Obama Foundation, have you collaborated with uh, the Obama Foundation with Project I Am? Um, the only, those are the only two things that we've done together. Um, we do keep in touch with them still though. That's really cool. Well, I'm sure, you know, there's endless possibilities in the future. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So tell me about your collaboration with Gatorade. My, okay, so um, it was like a really cool day for me as well. Um, I think that that was like um, one of the most like one of my most fun days um in my life because it was really exciting to um be able to like work with Gatorade I mean um Gatorade is amazing I love their drinks and stuff so yeah. to like work with the people that I that make the drink that, that I have like during my games and stuff is like really cool so it was like an event where we um packed 5,000 bags there are like 90 of their employees so um it was a blue Gatorade versus red Gatorade. Um, I think I joined the blue Gatorade. Yeah, the blue Gatorade side because blue is my favorite color and my favorite flavor. So um, <laughs> so we did like a, a race and obviously we won. Um, yeah, obviously blue. So that was just like, yeah, that was like really fun. And um, I still keep in touch with them. I did like an internship with them. I posted that on my Instagram. Some people might have saw it. It was um, a day where I wore like a, a gray coat or something. It was winter and stuff, but that was really cool too. So I got to go to the office and stuff. Yeah, and I watched the video of you and I, I really love how you do your packing parties because like you guys walk around in circles around the table and it's, it's, it's almost like you're getting exercise and you're being, <laughs> you know, productive. So I really like that. Who, whose idea was that to organize it like that? I think it was mine. Yeah. Or my parents helped me come up with it. Gotcha. But I kind of feel like it was my idea. Like, it came from, like, me to, like, walk around in a circle. I, yeah, I remember now. I came up with the idea to go around in a circle. Yeah. And then they gave me the proper name for it, which is called the assembly line. So I didn't know what it was. I just thought of the idea to walk around. Very cool. Yeah, it's definitely a creative way to pack. Um, So let's talk about your Be Inspired campaign that you did with Disney. Yeah, okay. 
So, I mean, it was, oh, I mean, it wasn't really much. It was like a small thing where they asked me to do a video to put on like a commercial on Disney Channel, which was awesome because the people who introduced me and like introduced all the people who were on saying those, like those little videos, um, one of my favorite Disney shows, don't judge me, I still watch Disney Channel, um, <laughs> Raven Home. Um, that's nice. one of my favorite shows on Disney. Probably my favorite show because that's pretty much the, um, one of the only ones that I watch. But they, um, the brother and sister, um, they they introduced me, which was awesome. I didn't know that that was going to happen. But, yeah, they were just going um, to have me do, like, a video to put on a commercial. So it wasn't really that much, but it was just cool to see myself on TV on Disney Channel. So yeah that's really cool that's that's awesome and you've done multiple co collaborations with them right um well only two i think because yeah i think we you you have a question about that um about yeah yes so my next question actually uh, it's not about disney but if you want to go ahead please oh yeah so um, I was also a part of the Marvel Hero Project. Marvel is a part of Disney, so that's kind of where it, where it came in. Um, so I was a part of that um, group of 20 kids, the Marvel Hero Project. If you have Disney+, Plus, go check it out. Um, I'm episode 6 on the Marvel Hero Project. That's the name of it, episode 6. Um, yeah, um, it was just, like, a really fun experience getting to work with, like, with them um, usually when I do like filming for TV shows or filming for like people who like are interviewing me and going like a day of life maybe, um, usually it gets kind of like boring sometimes or, but Marvel, they, they had, um, that was like really fun. They, um, kept it very like moving for me. It wasn't, um, any like boring things happening. So I think it was really fun filming with them and getting to know like the, um, people who were um, directing it. Um, that was really cool. It was like a three month, five month process. And it was like a month break between, but um, I think it was just like really cool to film and to see myself on Disney Plus. Um, like one of the first things that was coming on Disney Plus. Um, I have a comic book. They gave, they gave all 20 kids a comic book with superpowers. My power is super speed. Um, um, which is really cool. I can say that I am better than Flash now, um, <laughs> so that's cool. Yeah, so, I mean, not not everybody gets to say that they're a superhero in, in the same category, just like Spider-Man and Captain America and those people. So I think that I'm just, like, amazed by that. It's really cool. That's fantastic. And uh, you actually, I think recently that I saw on your Instagram, there was, like, a class project and uh, your Marvel was part of it, is that correct? A class project? Yeah, Some, something on on Zoom. I, I thought you said there was a class project and when oh, you opened up the magazine, there was your comic book section. Wait, do you mean the virtual packing party? No, I think it was a different post. Anyways, hmm. all good. So um, let's move on to the Diana Award. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. And did you actually travel to receive this award? No, I did not. I've never been out of the country. Um, but I'm excited to say that next summer, I'm going to be going to um, Europe. Very I'm cool. so excited. I've always wanted to go um, outside of the country. I'm um, going to like a basketball camp out there. Um, the one of the, the people that works there, um, they invited me to come. And that's like just awesome that what I do got got up all the way to Europe and now they want to um, um, help me come to like Europe. So that's just a dream come tr true to like go outside of the country. But no, I did not go like outside of the country to receive it. But um, my parents just like came in my room and said I won the Princess Diana Award. I didn't know anything about it actually, because I I never like really heard about it. Um, but once I did like more research on it and found out what it was, um, it was like really cool. So, yeah, I was just glad about that. 
Yeah, it's really cool for sure. Um, so in 2019, you were the recipient of CNN Hero Young Wonder Award. Tell me about everything. How did you find out? Mm -hmm. What was it like to travel there? Tell me about your experience from start to finish. All right. So um, basically, my we were um, in the car. We, me and my mom, we were in the car and we were driving downtown. And then she got a phone call and she got off of it. She was like screaming, like, like just screaming so loud and like saying, "You're you're gonna be um." A, a CNN hero, and I was like, what, what, she said, um, I was going to be like a CNN hero, and I was like, what, what is that, what is a CNN hero, so, wait, yeah, um, I was like, what, what is that, um, a, what is a CNN hero, so she explained it to me, and um, I still was confused, I didn't, I still didn't know what it was going to be about, so, once we got home, she like started talking about it more, and then I think like a few months later, we got flown out, flew out, um, flew out to New York, and that's where it all happened. It, we were there for like three days maybe, and it was this whole event. Um, they did filming before that actually between those months. Um, they had the camera crew come to um Chicago and film. Um. That was really cool too on um, CNN. Um, before that, I was actually on CNN, but it was really cool to actually be in person and film with them. Um, so once we got to New York, it was, I I have like a lot of family in New York, so it's kind of like it's um, really cool to go to New York. Um, I have, it's kind of like a second home maybe. Um, so we went there, we went to the event. Um, I had this checkered, suit on like with a um with a turtleneck a black turtleneck with my chain um i was pretty pretty looking really nice that was probably <laughs> one of my best suits that i've ever worn um and i was just like really excited i was looking pretty good and um just excited to meet like the cnn crew because i think anderson cooper was there mm -hmm. um yeah he was there um, I got to meet him, take a picture with him, and w once we got to the event, um, we were sitting in this museum. It was kind of like a whale hovering over us. It was, it was like so weird, but cool. Um, and they they were like um, calling the kids up. So once I got up there, um, I was just kind of like, whoa, because like this, I didn't know this room was like that big. Um, it looked pretty small to me, but once I got up there, it was like huge. Um, so they told me, they like, she handed me my award and she basically said, um, how do you feel? I said, I'm just excited um, to be a CNN hero. And yeah, it was just a great experience. I didn't really have a, 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 a speech, but cause they were like having other kids get on and stuff but they just had me like say what my organization does and that's it but um yeah it was just really cool to get up there and get that tall blue back um and blue is my favorite color so um that was really cool that's right and and right before we started the interview we were attempting to have a blue background for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so your love for blue is clearly uh, like pretty big and i love blue too it's beautiful um so more recently you actually did which i thought was phenomenal you did a virtual packing party tell me how you organized that and you know how many people were involved and um tell me more about it we had about like 40 people 40 youth from 28 states um it, to, to just say that um, to actually organize a virtual packing party is like it seems pretty easy, but it, like at first it seemed pretty easy. Um, but now that like when I did it, it was like really hard to like, get it, get all the people involved and um, get all the like things to ship out to them. Like that was just a, a huge process to actually ship them out there um, to all 20, 28 states and stuff. So um, once we like actually started doing 
we went like the Packer party. We it went, it went like back. It went by like really quick. Um, we did every each kid did like 50, 50 bags, and some of the kids had help, so that's why it went um past really really quick. But after that, we had to do some more bags, like one hundred, one hundred more or something. Um, but yeah, that was just awesome to do my first back, virtual packing party, and I'm excited to do another one very soon. So stay tuned for that. Oh, you gotta let us know. That's really cool. And uh, you know, there was there was um, forty youth involved. So once once they packed everything, did they then go out and give them to uh, local uh, homeless individuals, or did they ship them back to you? Um, they didn't ship them out to me. They um, gave them out in their states. So it was kind of like branching them out, yeah. which was awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, it clearly your reach goes beyond the U.S. Um, this is a picture of five girls in Switzerland who heard about your story and raised four hundred dollars to send to you. Not only uh, did you inspire them, but you also inspired a group of young people in Hong Kong who heard about your story, created blessing bags, and they were out giving them. Um, what does it feel like to have such a Im positive influence on other people's lives and that they were touched by what you were doing and that they went out and you know exemplified what you were doing? It feels um, amazing to know that I'm influenced, like by itself just um, being an inspiration to people, but to know that it's all over the world is just like astronomical. I mean, it's like unbelievable. Um, I can't believe that like Switzerland, I didn't even know what, like where that was at all, or Hong Kong. I never like looked into other places like that. Yeah. Um, but just to know that like people are hearing about me all over the place is like really cool. That's really awesome. Well, you know, you're you're spreading a lot of positivity, so it's it's bound to touch a lot of people. Um, so CNN recently uh, did a, a a feature on you and Kavanaugh, and Kavanaugh is a seven year old young man who, after seeing how people were struggling on reservations, he decided to fill up a fifty three foot truck with goods and necessities and take them all the way from Maryland to um, a reservation in South Dakota. How did you find out about Kavanaugh and tell me how you got involved? My mom told me about him. She showed me on um, his Instagram on, on one day and I was like, this kid is, is really cool. And we got to talking about like doing a partnership. Um, him and his family are really cool. They um, were very welcoming. Um, to do like a partnership and I sent him some of my blessing bags and he sent me some of his snacks to both <laughs> give to senior citizens. Very cool. Um, so that was a really cool partnership. Yeah, collaborations. And also for anybody that wants to uh, find out more about Kavanaugh, he's, his handle is actually on our uh, ticker at the bottom. So definitely reach out to Kavanaugh. He's, he's amazing and he's only seven years old. so you know, he's following you in your footsteps. So that's really good. Tell me about um, the role that your parents play in your organization. Um, they play a big role um, in terms of like all the like the business aspect and um, calling people, um, doing that stuff. I've been trying to get more into that, um, into that type of aspect. But um, yeah, they're just like a huge help yeah yeah the business side um they're just like a huge help with that and all the organizing of all the toiletry items that we have like we have a huge like box for it <laughs> in our um living room it's like it's clear now it's very clear now um but sometimes it's just like filling up the whole place and um it's hard to watch tv and move around and i'm always tripping over things so um but yeah they're um a huge help with like the business aspect and um, organizing things and getting people to come, so yeah. 
That's really cool. And also your grandma is involved in what you do, which is which is super sweet. Grandmas mm -hmm. are the best. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's my Gigi. That's your what? That's my Gigi. She um, might Gigi. be called Grandma's Grandma. Wait, say that again? Gigi stands for Grandma's Grandma. Yeah, grandma's she, grandma. I don't know why, yeah. I call my grandma a Tete. I'm not really sure what that stands for. I think it was probably us being kids and um, didn't know how to call her name, so we just came up with a Tete. So, um, or, it, I don't know. It, she, I, I was born and raised in Ethiopia, so. Um, a Tay Tay is what I, we call my grandma, but Gigi's cool. <laughs> um, so I found a really cool picture of you on Instagram that I absolutely love, love, love. This is three-year-old you holding a mic. Wait, I can't even see it. You can't see it? How do I show it to you? Um, you recently posted it on your Instagram page, um, and you wrote a caption. You know what? I'm going to try and show it to you. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, you still want, might not be able to see it. But um, I'll describe it to you. So it's uh, you're wearing a blue sweater, and uh, you have a mic. You're three years old, and the caption reads, Throwback Thursday, even at three, I had a mic. I was desti uh, It was destined for me to share my voice. Tell me about sharing your voice because you also actually go out there and speak, right? Wait, am I wearing a diaper in that, vid in that picture? No, you're not. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, no. one of my pictures on Instagram, I do have a diaper on though. Yeah, oh, I thought you were talking about that one. How did I miss that? I totally missed yeah. that. Um, yeah, but, um, can you, wait, can you say that question again, what you say? Um, you also go out there and speak on behalf of your organization. W what are some things that you speak about, um, and you know, as a motivational speaker? Um, I usually go to schools and try to motivate people. Don't wait to be great. That's my slogan. That's my motto. Um, I believe that us as young people don't have to wait until we're adults to become change agents or start our own business because we can do it right now. And what's the point of waiting? when you can start now and be ahead of everybody when you're when you're like an adult um so um don't think that your your age doesn't matter at all um some kids are smarter than adults and um we have big ideas we have great ideas too so um yeah i think that um adults need to start listening to us and that's what i try to spread the mess a message to adults when I'm speaking to like, just adults. Um, I actually said that at a junior. I was at the junior NBA co um, coaches conference. Isaiah Thomas was there, the old school one. Um, he was there. Um, I got to meet him, and I also showed a picture of that on my Instagram and like a video of him. Like he was, he like got on his knee. Um, it like he got on his knee to me and I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, yeah, so that was like a really cool experience. And I told everybody in that room that, um, that us kids, um, have fresh brains and your brains are like kind of old. So you need to listen to us. Um, so I managed to kind of call everybody in the room old, um, cause I was the only <laughs> kid there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's the message that I try to spread. Well, you know, being young is, is a great time where you can get in, you know, and say, you guys are old. Let's kind of take the wheel now. Um, but I love that you said that because I always think about young people and I think my fascination with young people is you have such a fresh perspective on life. Um, you are not conditioned to think in a certain way so that flexibility and also that you guys haven't um kind of gone through the process and there are no limitations you know what i mean those mental limitations are are very important uh, are you know are hard to sometimes break out of when you become an adult so uh, you guys do have fresh minds and so an ability to see things and and you know uh, a fresh ways so I think that's really cool 
um, that you that you spread that message um, because I, I totally agree with you there so let's talk about your fashion sense because you mister have a really really awesome style and I totally dig your style uh, tell me a little bit about um, where you get your um, tips and tricks for fashion um I would say my dad um he like when I was a very young kid um like three years old four years old um I did actually look pretty cool I mean um he, he made, he got me like um, really cool outfits and stuff to like wear and like all the pictures I see of myself, um, I was like, dang, I didn't know like I was looking like that I when I was really young. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, my style right now is like more of, since I'm like getting older and stuff, I'm trying to get into maybe like luxury brands, maybe, I don't know. Um, but I've like I'm a Nike kid all the time, forever. Day, I'm, a, I'm a Nike person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my dad is an Adidas person. When I was younger, he always dressed me up in Adidas. But as I got older, I started realizing Nike is the way to go. Um, so <laughs> yeah. But for my birthday, I'm trying to my 13th birthday. I'm trying to go crazy in terms of like fashion and stuff. But I don't even know what's the point because we're not even. I don't even know what we're going to be able to um, go out normally. So, um, yeah. But I, I love suits, actually. You, hmm? sh you should do all your shopping online. You should just, like, make a giant cart of everything that you love <laughs> and be like, this is my wish list. Of my yeah, I already <laughs> did that. I already did that. My birthday is in, too. I did that, like, uh, like last month, and my birthday is in until September. Yeah, well, yeah, there's uh, definitely some time to go, so you, you better get your, you know, expensive outfits in. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So tell me about your love for basketball and what it means to you and what role does it play in your life? Because I'm sure you're busy and you, you give back so mm -hmm. much. So uh, what, is, what does basketball mean to you? Um, it plays a big role. And it kind of gives me like freedom, or like when I'm angry, I can just refer to that. Um, and yeah, um, I, I have like a, I want to have a future w with it. So um, it's kind of something that I take very seriously. So um, yeah, I mean, it plays like a huge role in my life. So I mean, it's not really much to say about it because. Um, it's just something that I love doing, and it's something that I can't really describe um, because I love it so much. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I actually have a game on Wednesday, so I'm cool. um, pretty excited for that. That's awesome. And and where where is your game? Hopefully. I think it's in, like, the suburbs maybe or something like that. Okay. Yeah, we've been playing in tournaments for the past, like, month now. Nice. And uh, have you, we've interviewed Peyton. I know he's your buddy. Have you met him mm -hmm. and have you played basketball with him? Yeah, I met him um, once he was in Chicago for like a week for All-Star Weekend. Okay. Um, and we went, I, me and him, I got him tickets to, we, we got tickets to like the Rising Stars game and the Celebrity Basketball game. Oh, nice. Um, we, we, I was trying so hard to get tickets to the All-Star game. I was so angry that I can that I can like get tickets. Um, and I all like for the past two years I've been wanting Giannis to win the All Star game. Mm -hmm. So LeBron winning two times in a row is really upsetting. Um, but yeah, it was just a really fun weekend. I'm um, spending time with him and playing. I got to play basketball with him in um, a junior NBA. It was like a junior NBA um, kind of like camp for one day. Um, at the Navy Pier, so me and him went to that, and it was like, um, like kind of like a, like a three on three type tournament. Um, yeah, we had lots of fun. That's cool. Yeah, and and I also heard uh, he he gave out some of your blessing bags. Oh yeah, yeah. That's really mm -hmm. cool. We sent we sent them. Yeah, I love that. 
Um, so you, I was so surprised to find out, um, you also do tap dance. I didn't see much of it on your social media. So I was like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I think I saw it in one yeah. of the CNN features. Uh, how often do you do that? And uh, what do you love about tap dance? We don't do it often now because of Corona. Right. Um, yeah, I have a tap dance in like maybe like four, five, six months because our program ended before Corona. So gotcha. it's been almost a year now. So I'm kind of rusty probably mm -hmm. um, because our program ended in like January maybe okay. or like maybe December or something. And then Corona happened and we were supposed to like get back to tap dancing during the summer, but Corona happened. So that was really tough. Um, what I love about tap dance is being able to um, use that and, and like incorporate it with basketball. That's the whole reason why I do tap dance is to have good footwork. Okay. Um, that, that was my parents' okay, good thinking um, over there. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. And and speaking of your parents, does does Miss um, does Miss Jackson sleep? Um, because <laughs> I, I, mean, I get, I'm, I'm in LA and you guys are in Chicago and I get emails at like, mm -hmm. or replies at like, you know, 1am and 2am my time. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, does Miss, Miss Jackson sleep at all? Oh, <laughs> um, wait, when did you get that email? Was it like maybe a month ago? me so late at night. I'm like, oh man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, She's been staying up probably until maybe like one or two in the morning, maybe or three. I don't know. Yeah. But I like to stay up like until six. I'm willing to do that. They always make me go to bed um, earlier than that, but I'm more of an all nighter. So I like doing that when I have the opportunity to. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, what advice do you have for other young entrepreneurs? The advice that I have for them is to um, kind of, wait. wait, can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Hello? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe you're, you're pausing. Oh, I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you now. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, um, my advice to them is to kind of go over like the kind of like go and I forgot what it's called. Um, it's something that I always say, but like in terms of um, what to do, but what that basically like sums up to is go in your community and see what things can use some help, see what things need some improvement um, too, and try to um, find out how you can make, like make that into, into something. Um, also, if you don't want to do that, you can find something that you're passionate about and make sure it's something that you like. A lot of people sometimes go into things that, um, they don't want to do at all. And they think that like, maybe their parents think they want to like, um, think they want to do, or like, they think that will maybe fit the public eye, like people, like other people like do something that you want to do. Um, or you can combine your passion and, um, the community. That's what I did. I'm passionate about homelessness and that has to do with the community. So um, that's the advice that I would have. Also, start off small. That's what I did. I started off with a little packing party at Razzmatazz. We had like 50 people and we packed like 30 bags and um, it, we had like an arcade games after. So don't start off with like 100,000, 1,000 or something like that. Um, try to start off small. Very good. Well said. And then I like, kind of build the way up from that. Yeah, and and even 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 if it's small, it still matters. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so talk to me about your merch. I love 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 your gear, and I'm actually eyeing myself a, a couple of items there. Uh, tell me a little bit more about it and where people can find it. Yeah. So this is this don't want to be gray shirt. We have like purple ones. Um, we have like maybe blue ones and, um, all types of colors and, um, yeah, I'm soon coming out with like more designs, like more, 
kind of um, like less plain designs maybe. Um, so look out for that. You can go to my website, officialprojectiam.com. That's the website for the um, organization. And that's where we have kind of like um, this, I have a pillow line. Um, and that's um, where I sell those at. But my actual clothing line is called Trophies. Um, that's trophiesbynaeem.com. Naeem is spelled N-A-E-E-M. N-A-E-E-M. When I was younger, I couldn't even spell my own middle name, <laughs> right? So um, I don't blame you if you spell it wrong. Um, so it's trophiesbynaeem.com. That's the website for my clothing line. I have shirts, jackets, hats. And I, um, yeah, make sure to go um, check it out. Yep, uh, and I am definitely buying myself a pillow because I love your purple pillow. Um, so, yeah, everyone, go support um, Jaquil. His social media is up on the screen. Please, please support this young man. He's doing so many amazing things and inspiring so many people. So definitely, um, you know, go spend your money with Jaquil. <laughs> Jaquiel, thank you so much. I am so, so honored that you joined me for this interview. Um, please continue to be uh, this amazing, precious, magnificent person that you are because you are touching so many people's lives. And I really want to say thank you, not just me, but on behalf of uh, our communities. Um, thank you for everything that you're doing. And thank you for showing the world so much love and kindness at such a young age and uh, I am excited for you and I can't wait to see, you know, where you take this. Obviously you've come very far with it um, and I hope you continue to grow and uh, you know, we're always here to support you. Uh, thank you for making the time. Please thank your mom for me and uh, yeah, until uh, next time, maybe we'll have you back again. Thank you for having thank you, me. Thank you so much. Thank you.